Get right to the romance and find the way to wow this Valentine's with 1-800-Flowers.com. From classic roses and bouquets to decadent chocolate-covered berries, gourmet treats, and more. Surprise your Valentine with 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, get the 18-stem Enchanted Rose Medley for $39.99 or upgrade to 24 red roses for $10 more. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash tune in. He's at this board meeting. I guess he's on the board. And he he starts like a slow clap after yeah, James <laughs> says that. As, as if that's like a, an official business. It's like, yeah, we all started clapping. So now he's so, that's yeah, a vote so, or something. Is, I wanted somebody to just turn to him and go, this is a fucking boardroom meeting. What are you man? doing? Why are you? <laughs> Did you try to start a slow clap? Are you There's doing a There's nine of clap? us in here, man. Get out. You're not even on the board. What are you going to do? <laughs> even if we I wanted agree. somebody to do the Jerry Springer like, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, except when we don't. We kind of every week do that. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Oh, I'm so excited. I know. This is you have everything waited. I loathe, but it so sustains long. me. <laughs> this is, I hate this is, everybody who likes this so much. Heath has been climbing this mountain since we started the fucking show, and he has reached the summit, folks. <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Can a movie smell like Axe Body Spray? <laughs> I, so movie? it smells like cheap cigars, or not cheap cigars, like bad cigars, right? Just right. Like expensive but bad cigars. Yeah, that's what I smelled. <laughs> also joining us today is our special guest masochist. You know him from Cognitive Dissonance and the season liberally cooking show Cecil. Welcome back, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm just going to be shoveling coal into Heath and warming my hands on him the entire time. That's what I'm, I'm just going to step back and watch the hate. You know, there's too many regulations surrounding the shoveling of coal. Yeah. Into people. Yes. Into people. <laughs> into human beings. All it's right. government overreach. I feel like we've hinted at it mightily, but we might as well make it official. Tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Atlas Shrugged. Part one. Part one. Part, Part one. one of three. They fucking, they fucking Lord of the Rings this thing. They sure did. It's it's an epic tale. And to make that happen, they had to have a fucking movie where nothing happened. Sorry. Uh, yep. Yep. Well, <laughs> <laughs> nothing happened. Remember the walking Lord of the Rings? This is worse than that yes. by a lot. Yep. Oof. Oh man, it's the story of rich white guys not that the taking their ball and going home in a snit. And everybody else being like, uh, we don't we don't care. Like, eventually it will be that. But we didn't get around to any of that. <laughs> this movie, this is the prelude. Go, I don't want you to. We have we can get. Well, a ball. OK, we don't no, care. that's go, please. Yeah. Well, but we don't know that yet. Well, we, we got a few people doing that. We actually. Yeah. Where yeah. have all the heroes gone in the movie? I just watched it. Some people get drafted. <laughs> Some people get drafted. And then a woman just keeps saying over and over. What happens when all the good men go away? What will happen to the to, to America? <laughs> this this movie gets made. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love Succession, but you're tired of the SJW bleeding heart writers who tried to tell you that money isn't everything, okay, you will you love <laughs> this movie. This is what Jeff Bezos watches when the last seasons of Succession start to bum him out. It's regression. <laughs> <laughs> and is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst immediate trivia from Amazon. So the first thing that happens, I turn the movie on and Amazon tells me, yeah, the entire cast was replaced for the sequel. <laughs> none, of, none of these people are going to be in part two. <laughs> Agreed to do this again. First thing they tell me in part one, everybody's gone. Yeah, yeah. You, you know how these guys are all the poor man's somebody? Yeah, well, yes. we, they yes. wound up with the poor man's them eventually, yep. if you can imagine that. This is the movie equivalent of those haunted houses that nobody makes it through. <laughs> so I was going to go with best worst set rotation, right? So 
over this movie is just back of a limo office mansion back of a limo office mansion <laughs> it's just occasional rich guy bar with a, establishing shots of trains that's for 90 fucking yep. minutes yep. yep 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 yeah and the establishing shots of trains is like 88 of those not it's a lot <laughs> yeah, it's a lot and it's like it's not like the, the, like the character won't then be on a train. We just see trains. This movie has a toddler esque fascination with trains. We know what trains do. <laughs> they think we maybe don't. You certainly can get a lot of train B roll with an iStock account. So you really okay. can. Yeah, there's, there's so clearly. much. There's so much. <laughs> So this is more toward the end, but it's seriously one of the best parts of the movie. Best worst plot breadcrumb trail when they're trying to track down. Yeah. Oh my God. Everybody knows everything about everyone. And it's amazing. (laughs) It's seriously the best. It's like, it's like, oh yeah, well he had a student who went to this school and that student had a hangnail and went to this doctor and that doctor. It's amazing. It's fucking unbelievable. (laughs) And it goes on for so long. It's like back to bacon at a certain point, right? It's It's so amazing. I think it's it's more than six steps, though. Literally, it's so it's great because, so like, stupid. it's so long. They're asking people about sales, and they're like, "When you sold your company," and it's like, if you were to ask me who I sold my house to recently, I wouldn't be able to tell <laughs> right. you the fucking yeah. name. Yeah. I happen to know that his sister-in-law's cousin. <laughs> yeah, right. Which, exactly. Yeah. What the fuck are we doing? Here? When did you uh, have that conversation? It's like you sign a paper and you, the company's <laughs> gone. What are you talking about? And also, like, none of it's necessary to tell the fucking story. No, none. right. It could just be, it could be two steps. It would make sense and they wouldn't have, but yeah. But they're trying to get a trilogy out of it. So, oh, it's the best. Oh, well, so much of this is Ayn Rand was trying to hit a word count. So they're trying to hit a trilogy. (laughs) What was her target? She's like a 1200 page book. Yeah. Doesn't need to be. God damn it. Paul Ryan can jerk off onto a smaller fucking book. It'd be easier for him to have it on the show. (laughs) Well, can't soak up as much if there's less pages. Oh, yeah. You know what? Think. I, I did not think of that. It's the correct word count. And I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst bad thing that the movie thinks is good. Oh, my God. Yes. We've watched like we watched Loving the Bad Man together. And yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the conceit of this show. Our job is, hey, did you know there's a whole industry to thinking that bad things are good? That's the whole thing. We have never encountered a bizarro universe the likes of Atlas Shrug. Right. <laughs> Monopolies, greed, hating your family, <laughs> premature ejaculation. Yes! Yes! You guys just listed the yes! protagonists of this yep. movie. Buying shitty jewelry that your wife hates. Hates. <laughs> just every, yes, yes. Yep, yep. Ah. <sighs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got a lot of. Nope. You know what? This movie breaks the formula. We have a lot of nothing. There is nothing that there's a lot of. We do. But we're going to take a break anyway. When we come back, we're going to dive into all the banality that is Atlas Shrugged Part One. White people. We have a lot of white people. Okay. Yep. (laughs) Yep. There's There's a black. There's Eddie. one black yep. assistant. Some Eli of their racist. best assistants are black. <laughs> Always trying to escape the movie. All his scenes are walk and talks for a reason. <laughs> ooh, 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 go for it. Nice, nice. That's like a quarter full. Really is, yeah. Hey, guys, guys what, are you, what are you doing hanging out outside the Starbucks? Oh, hey, Cecil. Well, Heath, Noah, and I re- read a bunch of articles by boomers about why we're poor, and it turns out it's all the Starbucks we've been drinking. Yeah, apparently that's really messing up the housing market for us is the Starbucks we're drinking. Yeah, so we wait out here, and when people throw out their drinks, boom, free coffee, baby. We have like three quarters of a Frappuccino at this point, Cecil. It's true. We do. Like Okay. Almost full. Uh, first, first of all, yuck. Like 75. Like super yuck. Second of all, if you want to save money, why don't you just switch to Mint Mobile? Ooh, what's Mint Mobile? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just $15 a month. Wow, that would save us a lot more money than frap capping. We did not decide on that name. Well, no. How could it not be frap napping? It's right there. Thank you. Yes. We will vote on it later. We said we would vote on it later. Let's vote now. It's frap napping. Guys, by go- by going online and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings onto you. All the plans come with unlimited talk and text, high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 
5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. All right, Cecil, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right. Well, Heath, it looks like we don't have to wait out here after all. Would you care for a coffee? My treat. Mm. I mean, I'm going to wait out here for a bit. That girl right there, she's really just picking at her muffin at this point. I want to catch her if she's going to toss it. I think she's going to oh, toss it. Oh, the ultimate frap cap. We're voting on this right now. That's not what we're doing. This guys is so weird. It's super weird. It's, it's frap nap. Good weird? No, not at all. Okay. Hands up for frap nap. <laughs> all right, guys. It is my honor. No, no, my pleasure. No, you know what? It is my planner to say that we will be writing Atlas Shrugged the movie. Hooray! Yes! Now, it's super important that we really communicate the messages of Randy and self-reliance in this one. So like, uh, you know, wait, so just throwing it out to the room. What's the core message that we want to get across? How about like people who don't think the point of life is making money are just jealous of how much money you make? Mm, mm, yes. Don't you still live with your dad? Uh, he, uh, he lives with me. Okay. I'm taking care of him. Oh, oh, does he need like at home assistance? I will him? take care of him if he needs it. Someone mm. go. Someone, we're not doing that now. Okay. We're talking. Okay. Uh, so it's about like hardcore business strategy, right? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Like, uh, like, like what? Oh, uh, you know, uh, business stuff. It's like, you know, you buy low, sell high, hardcore. Mer mergers acquisition yep yeah yeah no all that great we are on a roll anything else yeah um when when you come too fast it's it's probably your wife's fault put it in the movie i knew yeah. it wasn't just me i Definitely knew it not just you no i have the basement to myself so it's pretty much my own apartment sure man yeah <laughs> <laughs> you sitting on a workout bench right now? <laughs> I am sitting on a workout bench. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on what is, of course, the movie's near future, but our near past. It's September 2nd of 2016, and I'm like, well, at least they got the month that society ended, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> So we get this quick montage of there's been a stock market collapse and the oil and gas shortages and the, there's <laughs> environmental turmoil. And I'm like, pick a fucking apocalypse movie. Okay. Specifically, they said the Dow dropped below 4,000 points because of the mm -hmm. economic apocalypse stuff. Yes. They, so <laughs> this movie was made in 2011. Obama's already president and they wanted him to fail so goddamn badly. Yes. But literally, Obama... Took over the Dow was at like eight thousand, and he left, and it was at twenty thousand. So they're, yeah. they're not even close to correct. Yeah. It's the best. I love how much they wanted this. In twenty sixteen, they only missed they only missed the mark Heath, by twelve thousand points. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Oh, thanks, Obama. Yeah. <laughs> See, I wrote in my notes. It's kind of worth noting that post apocalyptic montages from movies of the past are now just the news I skip through. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, they stopped using planes this week. That's weird. Whatever. They're just, they're showing the terrible effects of unregulated capitalism right? as their yeah. dystopian. Exactly. Do they know what they're, nope. like, they say that giving people a raise has been banned by the evil socialist government at one point. What? They're so confused by what they're trying to say. It's amazing. Well, and what I love about it is because the story that this is based on is so ridiculously stupid, they have to keep throwing in absolute nonsense to break the fourth wall, right? So it's like they're, they're showing us all these news clips and most of it is, you know, normal-ish kind of economic apocalypse shit. There's environmental turmoil and oil and gas shortages and then it's just also Ragnar the Pirate took all the it, it, It's so, so funny. Fuck. I laughed so goddamn hard at this. We could have had a pirate movie, man! We got trains! It's a newscaster talking about, he's like, so 
So the Dow is down to 4,000 points, and uh, we had a bunch of really bad stuff with the trains falling off the tracks. Uh, also, a pirate stole all the copper in the world, and in weather, he's like, he tries to like, skate <laughs> over it like it's a normal it's thing. It was the best. It. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, can you go back? I wanted like the host next to him to be like, sorry, can you go back? Did, Did you, you say, say a pirate? pirate? Did you name a, a literal pirate you stole name you all the copper in the world, name. is what you said. You, you named the... We're a news program. <laughs> Do you think Ragnar the Pirate, like, retires and finds a new Ragnar the Pirate to take over so he keeps the name going? <laughs> Cecil, you've already committed to watching this with us, so I don't want to spoil it, but I am so excited for this pirate to break your heart because I know what this pirate actually does. Oh, uh, I thought this pirate was going to be amazing. Now, don't do this to me. All right. All right. No. You're doing it too early. <laughs> Let him dream. Let him dream. Eli. Oh, yeah. No, the pirate's going to be super cool. He will have a boat. <laughs> Just you watch, Cecil. His name is Ragnar Daniskild, just for the record. <laughs> Can I just say, like, we're five, this is a movie that's made in 2011. So they're looking five years into the future. And the dystopian future they picked was trains will be really big, really popular. <laughs> that's the dysto, that's the one feature <laughs> of the, of the next five years that's going to change our lives. Trains. Yep. The train. Something technology. that's never been popular in American culture ever. <laughs> Really yeah. gonna, really gonna take off trains, and uh, you know, I think pirates are gonna make a big comeback. Yeah, pirates and yeah. trains is gonna be the fucking eighteen yeah. hundreds all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if this movie needed a subtitle, it's gonna be yeah. the eighteen hundreds all over again. <laughs> oh, not a bad choice. Yeah. All right. So then we cut. To th this movie is so lazy in the way that everything is presented to us. We cut from a montage of newscasters to a news talking head show where we're going to meet some of our characters with a host asking their various motivations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Among these is, is CEO of Taggart Transcontinental Railroads, James Taggart. He's supposed to be the super evil guy, and they're sort of playing him up like that from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. But what he says is, we must act to benefit society as a whole. Like they're making him say something that is like altruistic. And then they're all at the same time, they're just like, isn't that evil guys? Like guys, isn't that fucking right? terrifying? To benefit society as a whole. Sorry, I didn't say it <laughs> evilly enough. Might as well like take a pause so that the room of young Republicans watching the movie can calm down. All right. <laughs> okay. We've all had our fun. Now let's, let's get to the good ideas. Am I right? If you say benefit society as a whole, three times in a mirror this guy <laughs> AOC pops up behind you <laughs> so yeah and so we're, and we're watching this at a diner as a dirty guy comes in to get some pie by the way this will be Midas Mulligan in case you're wondering if anyone gets a normal goddamn name in this stupid fucking movie <laughs> this is also the first time we get introduced to the movie's catchphrase mm -hmm. where it's like uh, he orders the coffee and the witch is like can you pay for that because you're your movie smudgy, and he's like, who is John Galt? And she's like, wow. I mean, that's dumb in the book, but it's really dumb out loud. <laughs> when you have to actually hear it. Are we going to say a bunch of stuff that sounded dumb in the book, but is way worse out there? Oh, yeah. No, sure that's are. the whole sure thing. Are. Yeah, it's real <laughs> yep. terrible. Okay, but just to review, can you pay for this? Because, like, I asked Ragnar's the real question. Yeah. <laughs> gold is for, for this is like... You can't just say John Galt and like get out of the question. Every single person in the movie answers like that. It's like, no, that's just another question that literally didn't answer Doesn't anything I had to help. say to you. Also, and this is a minor point, but again, this was made in 2011, about 2016. At one point on the Talking Head show, one person says, well, you know, gas is up to 37.50 a gal. No, the fuck it isn't. That's so <laughs> like why you could say seven dollars and seventy five. You could go with like a, a realistic number that's still very high. But no, you went with 11 D 70 billion dollars a gallon. Why? <laughs> By the way, that will not stop everyone in this movie from driving around yes, rich, no. poor. Driving to their heart's content. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for coming to the party. I know it cost you $7,000 to <laughs> be here. Out here. Yes. Best part is, is well, we'll get to it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's insane that, but you know, there's also this one part where this guy comes up to the counter and he asks for his piece of pie or whatever. And the lady gives him the pie. And then there's like, a bar fly, like a pie bar fly just sitting next to her with like a low cut. Did you guys, I was like, what is happening? What is she like? Everybody who comes in to get pie, she's like, hey, you going to share that pie with me? What are you going to yeah. do with that pie? <laughs> I'm going to smear it all over me. What's Would going you like on? to buy me a pie? What is happening? <laughs> well, and then pie guy leaves 
and a mysterious stranger in a hat stops him to talk to him about his backstory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a stranger comes up to a guy and he's like, hello, I value gumption. <laughs> and the, the guy who bought the pie is like, cool, same, me too. <laughs> do we just become best friends? And they, they do. Yeah. Yes. Perhaps the least realistic thing about this movie is the conceit that millionaires are open to strangers walking up to them and being like, hello, <laughs> care to talk to me somewhere? <laughs> yeah, but they do. We're going to learn later. They become best friends yep. more than you could possibly imagine. Yep. They're coming together on cookies for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the movie gives up the visual medium altogether and just types out that guy went missing on that day. <laughs> And, and we get the title screen, Atlas Shrugged. I kept thinking it's like a first round draft pick. Like this was his pick. Okay. Like he, of all the people he chose, it's the guy comes up to the counter. <laughs> Dirty pie dude. And for the first round, he picks some CEO. Like why? Mulligan. Why Max <laughs> Max Mulligan, the CEO? Okay, we'll find out later, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> CEOs are really important, so we'll find out, I'm sure. <laughs> the amount of Viagra that Atlas had to ship in before they started bringing in these old white guys. Let me You're try right? you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just to be clear, in the book, Midas Mulligan, that's the first round draft pick, he's the wealthiest banker in the world. <laughs> that's the literal description. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so he has just like... More gold than anybody else uh, yep, in, that's a, in a bag us, somewhere. Us might have, okay. <laughs> so, and speaking of the characters not having people names, now it's time to meet Dagny Taggart. So there was a terrible railroad accident. And she uh, she works for, she uh, whatever, co-owns the railroad thing. So she has to go into work for the emergency railroad thing. So we have this amazing sequence where she's heading to work, but all the shots have to be super tight. So they're not, you know, we don't see the 400 cars a second that are driving behind her. Right. Like we, we yep. keep seeing New York from like the treetops up and shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Also, just to be clear about the plot here, train safety is a big problem in this terrible dystopian world. Yes. And it's because there's not enough unfettered capitalism, according to the, the book and the movie. Right. It's because there's too much regulation, ultimately, <laughs> is the argument of the film. <laughs> they want to deregulate the train industry that's crashing all <laughs> over the place and killing people. Yeah. And no infrastructure bill. So that's why. No, clearly, right. there's no right. infrastructure at all. <laughs> so, OK. So James Taggart, the head of the railroad, is is in his office having a terrible day. His assistant is there telling him what a jackass he is, apparently. That's his job. This is Eddie, the only person of color in the entire movie, I believe. That's correct. NYU grad. <laughs> I hinted at this, by the way, when we were talking about it earlier. I am of the belief that Eddie, that actor, was trying to escape the movie at all times. All of his scenes will be walk and talks. And I think it's because the actor was just like, fuck you, I'm not doing this movie. And they were just like, oh, hello, it's me, Dagny Taggart. I'm your boy. He's like, no, stop trying to run lines with me. <laughs> like, no, I can see the cameras. Running. I'm acting. I'm acting. Get out. Fuck you. That's right. No, he's like he's halfway out the door through this whole scene. He's just like one foot out the door. Got, got, right. Right. Like, like he's got to pee or something. Yeah. <laughs> It's always like one side of him is to the camera. He's always sort of shifting one leg toward the door. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Like everything's like that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like trying to end the conversation with somebody. Oh, kidding. Said, well, okay. Oh, that's crazy. It is that's crazy. In 907. Oof. It's 907 in the morning. Well, all right. So <laughs> late in the morning. So, yeah. So, but, and then there's this great moment where the brother, the James is like, you know, I'm the boss of this company and my sister is a piece of shit. And she walks in right there. And, <laughs> and he's mm-hmm. like, don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I love you. <laughs> yeah, but we have to see that she's the real power behind the throne. And she's decided that with their rebuilt rail line, they're going to go with Reardon Steel. Yep. It's Magical, it's vibranium, everybody. In yep, case, it if is you're not vibranium. familiar with this stupid fucking book, yeah. <laughs> this guy, Hank Reardon, invented vibranium to make the plot work. Keep in mind that in order for this stupid movie to make any sense, which it doesn't, they need not one, but two forms of magic. Oh, three before it's over, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They need three different magical technologies to exist for this stupid... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which means... There was a night where Ayn Rand was sitting in her apartment. And she was like, ah, oh, man, my really stupid fucking political philosophy doesn't work. 
with just regular steel that someone's good at making. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> undercut it if he has literal magic steel, does it? No, uh, good job, Ayn. Good uh, job. <laughs> Nailing this. I, I want to point out that they make the villain, her brother, the villain, say, smaller companies need our money. Like at one point, like he's yeah. he again, they have to show they have to show him that he, they have to show that he's altruistic and evil all the time. Right. That's the, because that is an evil <laughs> that's an evil trick. Yeah. Yeah, it's an evil trait to them. <laughs> I'm buying from a locally sourced steel <laughs> know, manufacturer right? <laughs> who's not a huge conglomerate. Moi. Uh-huh. And I love, too, that we're supposed to believe that this, this Reardon steel actually is good steel. It's like the best magic steel in the world. But in order to get there, we have to, like, ignore the consensus of experts. Yes. That, right? Like, th that's a huge part of the plot is that they're like, well, all the scientists say that there's no such thing as vibranium. That's just something that Marvel made up. But, um, <laughs> and she's like, no, I know. I read Punisher War Journal number eight. <laughs> it's even better. She, she's an engineer. She's like, she like, yes. like he forgets that she somehow forgets your sister's major. <laughs> like, I don't even get it. Okay. Well, she took some engineering classes and she did her own research on this and like, yes. Yes, all of the scientific reports. <laughs> wrong. She says, when I see things, I see them. And I wrote in my notes, someone on a ventilator right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds peer reviewed. Well, so I wrote in my notes, I'm like, if you set out to create the most boring possible movie scene, you very well may have landed on bitchy sibling fight over which steel to use for their <laughs> railroad company. <laughs> God damn. Jesus Christ. I had, it's the best metal that no one used. Well, we have the best podcast no one listened to. Citation. <laughs> <laughs> <So I> just, <laughs> and we should talk about the fact that this is fucking Ayn Rand Mary suing herself into this book. Yes. Right. When in reality, she was like, a famous dupe who nobody liked, who smelled bad and constantly abused the social safety net because she would buy things like bags of uncut diamonds from strangers. Like <laughs> every time you see Dagny, you have to keep in mind that this is an idiot's version of herself. Yes. <laughs> So we cut over to the Reardon steel plant where he's watching the. She first buys. She first, of course, buys a print newspaper in 2016. Noah, I well, right, point yes, that exactly, because yeah, yeah, it's the future, <laughs> damn it, and we're reading newspapers. This was 2011. They knew what had happened up until then, right? <laughs> yeah, she's re she reads the paper for a second, and <laughs> again they gloss over this. She's like. Ragnar the pirate strikes again. Oh, you're right. Yes. The <laughs> okay, what pirates, is, man. What, are on? what a normal headline this is. Yeah. Damn it. So, yeah. So we cut to the Reardon steel plant. He's watching the first pour of the new Reardon steel, and he is very excited about it. Oh, he is whacking it to this steel. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but his secretary brings in his messages. He doesn't have time for silly ass messages. He needs to get this bracelet that he's made for his wife out of the very first Reardon steel ever poured. Okay, why? It's so ugly. It is. Why? The, the movie wants us to be like, oh, he made this really awesome thing and his wife doesn't appreciate it. Do you think nobody associated with this movie knew that six triangles was not a good bracelet? I, they could have done anything they wanted with the design. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a gauntlet you would get at Hot Topic and like, right. just make just make a regular <laughs> bracelet out of the metal. It looks it looks like if you're in a futuristic sci-fi movie, like someone puts that on and then it turns into a machine gun. That's right, what it yeah, looks exactly. Like. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the nanoparticles are housed. Yeah. Nano, yes. That's a nano bracelet if ever I've seen one. Right. So yeah, but so but Dagny shows up, so they have this. I guess it's supposed to be meat cute, but they're talking about steel prices. So I'm so bored. I have to like oh, God. hire someone to wake me up constantly through this fucking scene. <laughs> I wrote in my notes. Oh, my God. This is business written by someone whose idea of business is buying an NFT of a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this dialogue is. Because they're, they're both supposed to be like genius business people. Yeah. So she gets there and she's trying to like strike a deal for his fancy new steel and it's like I'm a great negotiator I'm a great negotiator and they go back I am I and then it was like deal deal, deal. 
And like, that's the we have thing. greatly like, negotiated. They're just sliding themselves across the table and switching sides. It's, it's so dumb. It's pretty fantastic. It's the second worst negotiation of the movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> so they meet cute all the way down to the parking lot. And at the end, she's just like, hey, have you considered that your new steel could anchor a whole trilogy? And he's like, a trilogy about steel? Really? Who the <laughs> fuck would watch that? It's boring. Right. The, the question is, like, have you considered the implications of this, you know, magical vibranium? You yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, like, yeah, it's it's like a great universe of stuff that will not be in this movie. There's like a, the most successful movie franchise ever. <laughs> it's based around that. You won't do anything of that yep. nature with, no. with your magical vibranium. <laughs> It'll be so... No fucking boring it it is great evidence that it's probably best white people didn't discover why brandium in the air yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so so hank reardon walks home and damn it if his whole family isn't there i write in my notes business meetings Yikes. sibling fights and family engagements this movie has it all <laughs> oh. now a podcast listener if you've been sitting there thinking to yourself oh man like a movie full of unlikable characters that can't be fun what if i told you that every time this family would appear, they would just stare directly into the camera and roast this movie <laughs> the entire time they were present. They're delightful. This family's great. Yeah. So this is so first he has to give his wife the ugly metal bracelet and her to go like, oh, you don't expect me to wear this on my fucking arm, do you? This is. <laughs> Looks like a fucking are, are nano nanobots going to go over my arm now. Like what? If I can't shoot aliens with this thing, it's the thought that counts, guys. Sometimes you buy your wife an ugly bracelet. That happens sometimes. No, <laughs> to some people. No, I love it. Some of us might have had that happen before. So, so good, Cecil. Cecil. No one sympathizes with buying your wife an ugly thing that she freezes in horror at the sight of that I do. <laughs> I don't stand there arguing with her about it. Right, I'm just yes. like, it's yeah. okay. The receipt's in the box. Yeah, I actually put exactly. it on top of the thing. <laughs> it's like a pre-apology. <laughs> the just receipts in the top there. Oh, <laughs> Think of it as a slightly unwieldy gift card, darling. I'm sorry. We can go to the mall now if you want. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, he goes into his office. And then we have to see, like, more of those money-grubbing philanthropists. <laughs> and so this guy, Philip, follows him into the office. He's like, hey, man, do you, can you donate money to this charity I'm doing? And he's like, fine, fuck. Jesus, whatever. <laughs> what make you leave? He's like, yeah. And the hero then says, he's like, what? Don't you care about the underprivileged? And his answer is no, I don't. The hero's answer. And not <laughs> because he's going to like, he's not going to be visited by three fucking goats, right? <laughs> he's going to no. stay that way and be the hero. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Then another one of the moochers is trying to help him out with this thing. And the only reason I want to talk about this second conversation, because it's nothing. He's just like, I think your science is great, even though no scientists have said it's great. Yeah. Is we we get a beautiful insight into what the people who made this movie think good food is. Rich people food, yes. It is a, a baked potato. It's, a, baked potato. <laughs> it's a giant porterhouse, too. There's like an 18-ounce yes. porterhouse that takes up three quarters of the plate. It's this enormous steak. And then a twice-baked baked potato that is as big as a toddler. Like, they yeah. think that rich people just get bigger food. It's so <laughs> yeah. stupid. <laughs> Potatoes the size of watermelons. This guy That's spent a whole twenty dollars at Chili's. <laughs> no, I bet he got the extra sour cream and everything. <laughs> when you cash in your Bitcoin, that's when they bring the old country buffet to you, my friends. <laughs> The world is your carving station. <laughs> Holy shit. Did he get soup and salad? Oh, soup and God. salad. Are you fucking kidding me? He's got a whole tray of bread. That's his own bread. All that bread oh is his. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And then, okay. And then we head to some rich guy bar for some scintillating metallurgy talk. Oh, now, God. This group of people I just have in my notes as the colluders. Mm hmm. One of them is the pawn shop owner from The Crow. The shit on me guy is in it. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. he is. That's right. That's the, the I, I was, that was the only one I recognized. There were others. <laughs> there, I'm sure they were in other movies, but that was the only one I recognized. This is also where we get our vision of what they think rich people do with drinks. There's a lot of swirling. <laughs> a lot of swirling. Yes. So much drinking. Yes. yes. Very much leaving your full glasses on the a table. A six to one swirling to drinking ratio. But they're idiots. So it's like martini glasses and it's just like going in everybody's eye every time they try to <laughs> Ow, you stabbed me with the olive spiky thing. God damn it. 
But they're all sitting around plotting on how to use government regulations to bring Reardon and his amazing steel down. And what they've landed on, I guess, is they're going to pass a law. One of them is a law passer guy. I don't they, they never say, but they're going to pass a law that you can only own one business at a time. Yes. <laughs> so stupid. One business. And that makes okay. no fucking They're sense. They're trying to make antitrust laws the bad guy here, which yep. is so stupid already. But then the, the law, the wording of the law they come up with is going to be, yeah, you can only own one person per one company is the rule. <laughs> you could just... You could just own multiple things with one company. Yeah, right. Like fucking Time Warner. That's one company, right? Like, yep. uh, sh- And we should have antitrust laws to fuck with them. Yes. Absolutely. And um, more importantly, only if a monopoly is one company, right? So yeah, like, if yes. you want to stop people to have, like, having monopolies, <laughs> limiting them to one company doesn't preclude that. Amazon no. is one company, man. Apple is one company. <laughs> Google is one company. Like, what the fuck? That doesn't do anything. That's literally the stupidest fucking rule. It's like the people who went to go watch fucking Trump co- with the counting of the votes, and they had no idea how voting worked. The same right. thing here. They have no idea how business works. They're just like, I don't know how business works. Let's just throw something in there that sounds scary. What sounds scary to you, Jim? <laughs> Too many companies. <laughs> Shit. Well, what's amazing is you can see their brains working because they were like, okay, we need to come up with a thing that's like against antitrust laws, but we can't say antitrust laws because antitrust laws are like, hey, what if you didn't own an entire industry? And they're like, ah, nah, even that won't fly. And they were like, so then maybe it's that everyone gets one small <laughs> business. <laughs> yeah. Does that feel good? Okay, what if we shuffle up the title deeds and hand them out like the beginning of Monopoly? Yeah, there, yeah, exactly. there we go. That's there. Exactly. That's not how Monopoly starts. Also, also, law talking guy, the guy who's like the law, he fucking deep throats that cigar. He lights a cigar and he <laughs> he puts that yeah, thing. I mean, like, I hilt. was like, it's an uncomfortable scene. He gets half of it in there. He's going down on that thing for like a minute. It is really uncomfortable. There is tonsil action. It really yeah. is. He starts to make that like, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's no good. <laughs> so, and then of course, it, this movie is as bad at business talk as it is just at introducing new characters. So, des- suave and desirable bachelor Francisco Danconio comes in, and everybody goes, "Hey, is that suave and desirable bachelor Francisco Danconio? <laughs> is that Francisco fucking Danconio?" <laughs> whisper, whisper. Wow, whisper, 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 his whisper. backstory is X, Y, and Z. <laughs> okay, he knows a pirate. So, <laughs> so meanwhile, Dagny is is businessing the business as hard as she can back at the office. She doesn't collude with colluders to get ahead. She businesses hard. So she's in her office. James comes in to antagonize her a bit. And of course, once again, he's got to be the bad guy talking about philanthropy. So he's like, hey, I don't think we're doing enough humanitarian work in <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> At one point, he's like, you can't take things away from people just because they need our help. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you saying? <laughs> no, go ahead. Finish your laugh. Sometimes yeah, I no, get, you into, get more. really yeah. into my... <laughs> but yes, fuck the Mexican people. That's what I wanted to... Uh, that's what I Yes, to helping you. people is the bad guy here. So yeah, they, but they establish that. And then Owen shows up to quit. Who's Owen? We're j- just... Don't even... It's not it's not important. If he if he has a normal human name, he's not gonna play much of a role in this film. Right. It's Owen, Owen Kellogg. Kellogg is yes. Oh, okay. Well never mind. He's still not I gonna wrote have it down. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down because well, we'll get to it. He's the second round draft pick, but I will get to it in yeah, a second. Right. Well, yeah, right, right, right. We'll get to it in a second. He's a mid level man. He's a regional assistant to the regional manager <laughs> at a train company, and he's draft pick number two for this magical he's draft two. capitalism project. Crazy. Yeah, so so he's like, I, I got to quit. And she's like, why do you have to quit? And he's like, mm, mysterious stuff <laughs> Wait for the sequel. Who's young up? But this is my favorite terrible negotiation of the movie, though. This is. Because oh, halfway yeah. through, she's like, what if I start writing numbers on paper and pushing that across the table to you? Is that now? And he's like, no, I, I just said that there's not an amount of money. And she's like, but this. 
It's written on a piece of paper. That's what it is. <laughs> it's so Open the paper. Well, and again, if they don't do some kind of realistic, like, how, what you know, what would you say to a guaranteed 7% raise this year and next and blah, blah, blah. She's like, I'll double your salary. <laughs> I'll double whatever anyone's offering you. Yes. <laughs> okay, I've been offered... Uh, Eight million, million dollars yeah, that's right. <laughs> by Ronald McDonald. Shit. <laughs> Clown got me again. She slides the paper over to him. She's like, name your price. And I was thinking, just draw a vagina on the paper. Please just draw a <laughs> vagina on the paper. Please. So then we cut to the bucket to the premature ejaculation scene, right? We cut to oh, Hank. Oh, Jesus. Holy fucking yikes. Finishing up unsatisfying sex with his wife. It's Christ. Okay. Okay, look, I get it. You are a greedy asshole and you don't care about poor people. You are writing a movie where your protagonist doesn't care about those things either. Why did they include that their protagonist is bad at sex? I don't know. <laughs> so this is literally how this scene starts. He's getting off of his wife in bed and she's like, oh, are you done? <laughs> All done then? <laughs> The Fuck protagonist. Holy shit, the protagonist. Dude. Holy shit. Yes. And he leaves. He leaves. She's like, where are you going? He's like, I got some work to do. He's like, you just you just came and went back to work, you piece of fucking shit. <laughs> okay, right. But that was genuinely positive to Ayn Rand. She's like, you know what I love to do? Is uh, not come and then go do a spreadsheet. <laughs> That's, who doesn't who doesn't love that, right? I don't have to. I, I want to. I don't want to have to worry about all this orgasms and cuddling. <laughs> a real man does his spreadsheets with a sticky penis. <laughs> <laughs> it's so call that a pivot table. Am I right? <laughs> I, right. I was so confused the whole time. Just like, wait, that's our hero, guys. Yes, our hero. What? Super sex man over there, two pump chump over there as a fucking <laughs> hero. So yeah, so he, he walks away from his outside. She, he's, he's like, you probably have to use some kind of device or something. That I'll leave him, so it won't be embarrassing for anybody. And then, and then is he it that, is it that he can't come without somebody who has more grit and gumption? I it could be. Did did he finish or? Oh wow, he, yeah, he, he, she says finished already. Yeah. So he can't. Okay. He finishes. But I guess one way or the other, you're finished, right? So well, if you, when, when you leave, it's over. He yeah. can't sexually please somebody who he doesn't respect. Okay. Oh, that's a generous way of looking at that scene. <laughs> yeah. That is what Ayn Rand is going for, for sure. He okay. sadly closes his book of sex excuses. I mean, I'm just guessing about the movie. I'm just probably guessing the <laughs> movie. I've never said that. Would you guys say that's a good excuse? Describe a flaw with the laugher curve. Too slow. <laughs> I can't come now. I'm going to do a spreadsheet. <laughs> but yeah, so he goes back to work and he gets a call from Dagny minutes later. She's like, are you done? You, I didn't think you guys would be fucking for long. Are you guys done? He's like, yeah, we're done. We're done. So uh, you want to you chat? And so they have a chat about where all these great men are disappearing to. Yeah, post-sex call to him is talking about Owen Kellogg, executive, who was drafted in the second round. Yes. <laughs> and, then, mm -hmm. and, and by the way, he's it says executive underneath his thing, right? When he gets drafted, they yes. show the little picture of him turning back at the who is John Galt guy, and it says missing since blah, 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 Owen Kellogg, executive. But then on the phone call, she's like, yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was grooming him for a managerial position. I'm like, a ma an executive is a manager. That's what the right. fuck? I want to see your company's org chart right now. I want to see. <laughs> you don't know what words mean. But yeah, but and then of course, one stupid rich white person says to another stupid rich white person, "Ah, uh, it's okay. It's us who control the world, and we shall see it through." Right? <laughs> Again, the the heroic fucking clarion call of the film. This this is libertarian phone sex. This is honestly like <laughs> this is what this is this is what gets me going on the phone. <laughs> we will pull the world through with oh. our bootstraps. Mm. <laughs> bootstraps are. I want to hang up, but I feel like I'm not being detained. So I don't know. <laughs> I want that bootstrap inside. Of him. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie is very much. Act one, the movie, and thus doesn't have act breaks of its very own. So we're just going to take a break there. But we'll be back in a minute with even more of Atlas Shrugged, part one. Hi, I'm Heath Enright. To help tell you about your sponsor, Truebill, this week, 
I thought I'd take a moment to tell you about our very own Eli Bosnick's financial decisions. Uh, I'm not sure what that has to do with Truebill, Heath. I mean, Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, Mm -hmm. want, or simply forgot about. Yeah, that's exactly correct. So I'd like to present a dramatic reading from our text messages dated November 11th of 2021. I don't think that's important. Well, I don't Eli really... texts to me. Hey, where do you buy your Bitcoin? Uh, I'm thinking of buying some as sort of a high risk savings account for my child. Me. You should definitely not do that. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill makes it incredibly simple. You just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Now, you might be asking yourself, did Eli follow my advice? No, he did not. Truebill also has budgeting tools and can help you identify your spending habits in their easy to use app. From there, he proceeded to take money out of the savings account for his child to purchase said Bitcoin on, again, November 11th of 2021. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash awful movies. Go right now. Truebill.com slash awful movies. It could save you thousands a year. Mm -hmm. Truebill.com slash awful movies. Hey, how's that Bitcoin doing, by the way? It's not great, Heath. It's not great. Mm -hmm. Do you want to borrow some money? Yes. Well, you can't. Beans. Do you want me to loan you some? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Gentlemen, gather round. Yeah, Mr. Reardon? I'm afraid I have some bad news. I, I, I've been approached by a mysterious man in a hat who offered to take me to a cool place where all the awesome rich people live. And, and so I'm leaving this factory behind. Oh. Um. Okay. Have fun. I guess. Yep. Have fun with that. I know you're probably wondering how you're going to manage without me. And I've, I've got to be honest. I, I don't know that you will. Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. We run all the machines and stuff. So we'll, we do everything. Well, it, which is right. But obviously, but what about sales orders? Uh, well, there, there's, that's the sales department. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Right. Yeah. I don't. Okay. But I mean, the business math. Taxes. Accounting? Yes. You're describing accounting. We have that I, too. I, I, shit, we have a whole department. Yep. For that. Well, I, I do a lot of the, uh, g- golfing. Uh, oh, no, please don't go. How will we play golf without you? Please, please no, stay. No, I, I understand. I'm afraid I can't, though. Goodbye. Can we please kill and eat him? I've been saying that Dude. for a long time. Yes. I mean, like, I mean, no, the, the golf thing. The golf, don't. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with another guy getting recruited by John Galt. The, the movie thinks that's a twist, by the way. I have the mysterious guy in a hat. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get the third round draft. Yeah, in the third right. round, Who is John Galt? Galt? That guy. We know it's that guy. Yeah, it's fucking that guy. It's, it's so clear what you're doing. We know what's happening. It's that guy. Yeah, in the third round, John Galt selects Richard McNamara, manufacturing CEO. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> Some old guy. Again, just like Eli said, like random old dude who's super rich is walking to work and he gets stopped and he has a nice conversation with somebody, you know, because that's how rich people would work. Yep. Also, this movie was made in 2011, right? So the fact that they, and, and what they have is he's going around getting all the best people, right? That That's the idea. And this fucking idiot, I get like why Ayn Rand missed it, but this fucking idiot movie in 2011 still is not going to put anyone in there that is not a old white man. Sure not. We got the Bear Stearns president of finance right here (laughs) for our amazing operation. (laughs) That already went under, idiot. Okay, it's fine. (laughs) Look, I haven't watched the third movie yet, but if they don't have like a a Lipitor tank on every corner of Atlantis, I'm not (laughs) buying this movie. (laughs) They just put it in the water system. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck fluoride. We got what you really need. Yeah. <laughs> and again, again, the weird guy, John Galt, with the, the hat and the trench coat, just approaches a stranger on the street. And he's like, I've got a society that cultivates gumption and individualism. And the other guy's like, nice. No follow-up questions. Sweet. I will move yes, to that am, place right now. I will Let's transfer go. all of my worldly belongings. Yeah. Let me scribble out a cryptic note to my wife and I'll be right with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, fuck that. Let's just go. Yeah. <laughs> 
So meanwhile, James Taggart is is in his car colluding with the little bald Italian guy from Brooklyn from oh, every God. movie or TV show that ever needed a little bald Italian guy from Brooklyn. The brother Seamus. Yeah. He's, he's almost Carl the Pug of Peggorn. He's like really close. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. They know each other. <laughs> Carl doesn't like to drop names, but like Carl's got his number. Had his number. He could get him for the podcast. He's got Carl's number. Yeah. To be fair, Carl didn't agree to do this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and they asked. They asked. Uh, yeah. He was going to be the reared and steel. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but so they're colluding to a enact a, a rule that would be anti competition and all socialist and everything. And while they're doing that, they get news that the Mexicans have nationalized all their shit because you know those Mexicans. Yes. <laughs> yep. And it turns out that Danconio handsome McHandsome face who Reardon doesn't like, who invested all his money in those mines. He was doing a double buff where you lose all your money <laughs> to make people also lose their money. To shove money. socialism in their faces. <laughs> right. It's like something. investing in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, it's like convincing your friends to invest in Bitcoin. <laughs> On November 11th, 2021. How dare you? <laughs> well, but by putting all of your money into it, right? So what we're supposed to believe is everybody thinks that Danconia is a, is so brilliant. So when he invested in all these Mexican iron mines, everybody was like, well, if he's, if Danconia is doing it, then well, I, I obviously have to do it as well. And then they lost all their money. And then he just went, ha ha, gotcha. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's what's going on. I was waiting so hard for them to do in the Mexican report when they're talking about whether or not like what happened in Mexico would be like, it was taken over by a pirate. I was so waiting <laughs> for them oh. to just be like, yeah, they've been socialized by a pirate guy. Sorry. That's how we lost Mexico. Cecil, I've got some great news about the next <laughs> movie. <laughs> so yeah, so of course, Taggart has some assets in Mexico, so they have to have an emergency boardroom meeting. Now, Dagny saw this coming, so she took all these precautions, and now James is taking credit for those precautions. Oh, double cross. Right. Yeah, he tells the board that he saved them millions by doing the thing that Dagny actually told him to do. And then Oren Boyle, he's another like shitty guy who was in the back room meeting. He's helping with this whole evil socialist plot. Mm -hmm. He's at this board meeting. I guess he's on the board, and he, <laughs> he starts like a slow clap after yeah, James he does. <laughs> says that. As, as if that's like a, an official business. He's like, yeah, we all started clapping. So now he's, so yeah, that's a vote like, or something. Is, I wanted somebody to just turn to him and go, this is a fucking boardroom meeting. What are you man? doing? Why are you? <laughs> Did you try to start a slow clap? Are you There's doing a nine of clap? us in here, man. Get out. You're not even on the board. What are you going to do? <laughs> even if we I all wanted agree. somebody to do the Jerry Springer like, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is where I wrote my notes. Jesus, this movie has more wood paneling than the 80s. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's a fucking room in this entire <laughs> fucking movie. Uh, anyway, so yeah, James and, and, and his guy go into the office to bitch about how Danconia tricked them all into investing in those mines. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Dagny is in her car. Oh, he won't take a... Hold on, hold on. He won't take a call from the... So Taggart wants to call the guy? Yes. And his answer is... You bore me. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> that, was that is the greatest fucking way to get out of every single meeting from now on because there's no way to counter that. How do you counter <laughs> you bore me? No, no, I don't. I don't. What? I'm a very exciting person. Look, I'll, I'll throw this out there. I've been shot down in some hurtful ways. Never been told I bore anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we get all of that shit and then we have Dagny in her car learning that this awesome contractor she had all lined up to make her railroad also disappeared. That was the McNamara guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He left a note that said, who is John Galt? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, and th they, claim, they claim that question means don't ask questions nobody can answer. That, that They say that here. That's not what it means. That's not, it's they not never what decide it what it means, but that's definitely not what it means in the movie or book. Nope. They never get in, that. in any way. And nobody ever uses it in reference to questions that are unanswerable. They right? answer the questions in the book, in the movie. Obvious. If, we already know who John Galt is, by the way. <laughs> if this, if this movie <laughs> so obvious. was being explained to me at a party, 
this is where I would take out my phone and start saying crazy. Whenever <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me and Eddie, uh, we got to yeah. take off. We're doing it thing. There's a great moment here too where like Dagny comes in to bitch at her brother for taking credit for all the Mexican shit. He says, oh yeah? Well, you have a complicated romantic history with Francisco D'Antonia. That'll come <laughs> in <handy> later for <laughs> people to know. And then, so then we have to have the part where she's confronted by Ellis Wyatt, the yeah! heroic Holy shit. oil bat cat. Fucking yikes. This guy, this is like, this is a Jack Reacher bad guy in any other fucking movie. Right. Yes. This movie <laughs> thinks they're establishing a good guy because he comes in, shouts at a woman, and then leaves. <laughs> yeah. He's an oil executive. And yeah, he's he's very mad at him for passing all these regulations that are interfering with his business. Oh, and can I just say I can't speak for anyone else on the podcast. I have worked for this person so many fucking times in my life yes. where they're like fill of ego rage and you're like, okay, what do you want to happen? And they're like, I want you to continue to do what you were doing, but post me yelling. <laughs> I am a protagonist in this movie. I play, I drive a Dodge Stratus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Also, everybody, everybody in this movie seems to want to go talk to people like they have to be in front of each other the whole time. There's never like a phone conversation. Gas is thirty seven dollars yes. a gallon. man. <laughs> he spent eighty four million dollars to have this yelling conversation. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's fly. He's did he drive from Colorado? Isn't that where right. he's from? Mm. Yeah, just to be hiding in her office when she showed up. Yeah, just <laughs> hang out. So, yeah, and then fucking Dagny and Hank have another exhilarating conversation about logistics. Oh, God. Oh, I so forgot this. I yeah. Remember the, it. The, there's, apparently, there used to be this great diesel engine company that got shut down because of socialism. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a shame if they were still around, they could sure help with these logistics. Well, it seems like he's implying that because it's an abandoned factory, they might have some engines they could just have. He, he's suggesting they could forage yes. for engine stuff <laughs> yes. to solve exactly. the problem of the world. I, I exactly. think we both agree that the two CEOs of the relevant companies are the people who should do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's really what's going to happen. It's so stupid. They're going to forage. For engine stuff in the movie and book. They are. We're yeah. going to watch them forage for engine stuff too. And also, uh, apparently, this is where we learn that she's invited to Hank's big anniversary party. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> she also asks at one point, she says, Who'll be left to keep things running? If like oh, they take away all these great men and I'm thinking nobody has been doing a bang up job. You're the one who set it in a dystopian future with you at the hell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And What's so fucking amazing is that this movie is so stupid that they can't picture what a universe where the CEOs disappear gets bad like. Yeah. Right? Right. So they're just like, what would happen? But all everything's still running. Meanwhile, we let the lower class get COVID over the last two years and everyone's like, there are no more onions in America. <laughs> <laughs> ah. But I did you did you consider you know, giving out, everyone the flu? This is it's a reverse Atlas <laughs> shrug. <laughs> <laughs> Atlas needs to do a little more lifting. Yeah. So, oh, and then we cut to a snazzy restaurant for some thrilling deliberation on mining rights. Oh, God. I do not care about this scene, but can I tell you what I do care about? What's that? At the beginning of this scene, the actress throws a drink that is way too full into the actor's <laughs> yeah. face. Yes, and does. he will spend the entire scene <laughs> yep. mad about it. Yeah. <laughs> He's got two, he's got like a glass of water and a wine glass. And I think she was supposed to use the wine glass. <laughs> yep. But she didn't. So he's just like, uh, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> the, um, mining. I was rights. wearing a lavalier mic, by the way. I feel uh, like yeah. I'm going to sneeze. It's like that chlorine sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just do it. <laughs> In my underwear. I was in, huh? I was in hell. He's pushing his hair out of his head and it's falling straight back down because it's so drenched. He's like, <laughs> 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 but yeah, but this is Francisco D'Anconio and 
Dagny is the God, the names are so it's like she just had, she pulled like random Scrabble tiles out and was like, well, got to <laughs> make a name with that one now. Yeah. If a white slinky, if a somehow Caucasian slinky was thrown downstairs, it made all of them, all the names for this movie. Dagny, Dun Kong Young. Richard. <laughs> James. Hank. Ragnar. <laughs> So, okay, so so now Hank and his wife are heading to their anniversary party. The TV in the car is telling them all about the evil socialism bill, and Hank is worried about that when he should be worried about celebrating his anniversary with his wife. But again, it's another scene with a family, so they will spend the entire scene roasting him. This scene opens with her being like, hey, honey, um, it's our anniversary party, and I was wondering if, you know, just as a little gift to me, you could not suck all the ass. <laughs> And he's like, no, <laughs> I will suck all the ass. Am I being detained? <laughs> no, no, no. We're just having a party for our anniversary. You're the worst. <laughs> you know, a wet vagina is a disease. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, but Dagny shows up at the party and sees Reardon and his wife. And she likes the ugly steel bracelet a lot. She thinks it's awesome. <laughs> and again, this, is, this is happens in the book, too. It's perhaps the funniest thing that happens in the book. She's like, I will trade you for my diamond necklace. And she's like, yes, this is what women fancy ladies do. They trade jewelry in the middle of a party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Dagny goes to another room and fucks the shit out of that bracelet because right, it's yeah. made of objectivist libertarian <laughs> vibranium <laughs> dildo. Yeah. I, I, I want to stop just for a second and say Dagny's dress looks so bad on her. Yep. Like the rest of the movie, she's in like really smart, nicely cut business wear. No, she looks like she, a pug here. She <laughs> looks like she is wearing, uh, somebody took those plastic shopping bags and knitted a dress out of them. Yep. It looks so <laughs> fucking bad on her. And when she walked in, I was like, what the fuck did they do to this poor lady? She like, She's like a normal, beautiful looking woman and they put her in the ugly. It's like making fucking... Jason Momoa wear a Michelin man outfit to your party. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but so she gets the bracelet and then Dagny and Hank flirt businessly for a minute. Yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> Hank sees that Dan Conia is, is there, but he's like, they have the Seinfeld Newman relationship. <laughs> apparently these two. Yep. <laughs> and, and also we learn here in a minute that like they've never met. Is that correct? They've never met, yeah, but they hate yeah. each other that much? I don't like him. Why? Because it said so in the script. His name <laughs> is <laughs> ethnic. It's not because he's Argentinian. Yeah. It's not that. Oh. <laughs> it's a good reason. <laughs> oh, also, this is, he goes to the bar to get a drink, and somebody's like, have you heard that the great Balf Eubanks is at this party? Oh, my okay. God. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about what this movie missed. This movie did miss the dumbest argument in the book. It did leave that out. I was very hurt by this. Yeah. So, and and I I will say I, it, in Ayn Rand's defense, a B and A and L a P and an H. I don't think you can do better than Balf in terms of getting a name out of that. So you know, <laughs> well done. I, flab, flab, maybe. It's like my first wordle word. So, <laughs> <yeah>. Balf. <laughs> And then it's like, that's not a word. That's not stupid. Yeah, that's, <laughs> no. What kind of idiot would book. put that in the book? Wordle. There's also this uh, a moment where they bring out the cake, right? And everybody's like, oh, that's a very good looking cake. And then they just leave with the cake. And I'm just like, do they, does anybody eat it? I feel yes. like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is that a thing? They just show you a cake? Right? I'd be yeah. curious. It, yeah, they show it and then they cut it in the back. I'm sorry, yeah. where the fuck are that you going? Give time. me a piece of that goddamn. I'm going to take a loose handful <laughs> right now before you leave. Are you crazy? <laughs> you guys are angry about this. This is my goddamn party. <laughs> how, I'll this stab you. you. This is how you do it, man. <laughs> We've never been to fancy Balf Eubanks type parties. Like yeah, that. you guys have clearly never been to a Balf Eubanks party. Look at you. Ugh. See, so can I just say thank you for telling us now? Because there's like a non-zero chance we get invited accidentally to a fancy thing. Yeah. And he yeah, side no, tackles Keith, the guy Keith, for stealing cake. Someone grab Keith before they roll it away yeah. and just like turn him away from the cake so he doesn't see it. <laughs> Bring it back, Casey. They're cutting it, they're Casey, cutting it right away. You know, you know, if, if you smear a little peanut butter on Heath's roof of his mouth, he might forget the cake is leaving. Yeah. So, <laughs> just laser in some cheese on the wall. I'm <laughs> <dying at it. laughs> 
We open up the iPad right before they start to wheel it away. Bluey. Huh? Well, Bluey. So, Baby shark. It's uh, <laughs> amazing. I do want to point out my favorite part of this whole scene is there's like a little dance scene as they cut to them having their conversation. And there's like a 70 year old dude dance with like a 20 year old girl. And I was like, that is the most realistic thing we've seen in this movie so far is that there's like a 45 year old age difference between dates at a CEO party. Right. Right. John Galt steps out. I like the way you date, sir. (laughs) (laughs) So that night after the party, Hank and his wife don't fuck. We watch them not fuck. The protagonist <laughs> of the movie walks into a room and says, don't worry, I'm not here for sex. Right, well, he walks in and she's like, oh, I'm not. I have a headache. If I am tired with a headache. I'm not. And he's like, I, I wasn't here for fucking. She's like, oh, thank God. Oh, okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Because uh, I, oh. you know, I ate a full meal and it's hard not to throw up when you've eaten a big meal. So I was like, eh, you know. Mm. <laughs> but but and then she's like, well, what are you doing here? And he's like, I just want you to know that fuck you, I hate you. And, and she's like, oh okay. And then he leaves. Yep. <laughs> right. She's she's like, I, I I'm angry at you for throwing a party at for me for our anniversary. Yeah. And she's like, why would you be? He's like, some the, how they think that's heroic. I don't know who the hell will likes yeah. this shit. He's like, next time you're going to have a party, don't invite people I don't know. And she's like, you don't have any fucking friends, man. You suck. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Solid point. I have some spreadsheets I have to go jerk off to. Thank you very much. Right. I know Balf. Balf? <laughs> you know Balf? Ragnar the Pirate. He did, but seriously, he does not counter with "I do to have friends." He's like, "No, nope. that's good, solid point." Bye. Yep. Goodbye. All right. Concede. Concede. <laughs> Next this time one. I come in, I will be here for sex, just for that. Who's John Galt? That ends scenes, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You about that pirate? <laughs> so, and then again, these writers are so fucking lazy. The movie then just cuts and has a news reporter VO say. Well, today they started working on the new Rio Norte line with the Hank Reardon steel. Remember from earlier in the movie? They had, that is going ahead. The entire national media does pretty much all train stuff in this. Yeah. Or there is a train news network that people are fascinated by. TNN. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, and this is so fucking funny because several times in, in, in this act, we will get these railroad building montages but because everything else is in a fucking mahogany bar somewhere, this is by far the most interesting shit to look at. Yeah. Right? This B-roll of train track laying. <laughs> yeah, they cut to like five minutes of how it's made and then they yeah. jump back to the movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. They're like, they're yelling over the voiceover. Here it says, <laughs> and then we get, I think, maybe the most useless scene in this movie, and that's saying a lot. And maybe the dumbest name in the movie as well. So James Taggart and his and his sister Dagny are, are headed to a thing where Dagny has to give a big speech defending the use of Reardon steel. James tells her along the way that it's not just a speech, it's a debate against <laughs> the great <clears throat> Bertram Bertram, yes, Scudder. <laughs> hey, Ein, do you want to go ahead and tell us the name for this guy? Oh, I, I definitely made up a name for him. Mm-hmm. What is it? It's yeah, Bertram. Don't name okay. a sickness that pirates get in your head that you make up. Scudder. You say Bertram Scudder? Did you think of a slur and then save yourself at the last second? Uh, so good. Are you? Oh. Were you just winging this while drunk at a DUI checkpoint? Why? <laughs> The- I'll just say the slur if you want. <laughs> but anyway, but but Dagny doesn't want to do a surprise debate with Bertram Scudder. Yeah, right. I can't blame her. So she just gets out of the car and, and, and wanders off. And she says to James, she's like, fuck you. I don't have to justify anything about my magical, untested metal vibranium that I'm going to use for trains all across the country, including bridges. <laughs> so like... Testing metal safety is the bad guy in the movie That's, right now. Yep. That's what's the evil guy. Yeah. It's like every time they mention safety standards, there should be a lightning crash. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder rolls in from the back. Von Brucher. Yeah. <laughs> so then we head to, to Hank's office at Reardon Steel 
where the industry lobbyist guy is trying to get him to stop making such good damn steel. Okay, here's what's fucking amazing. This scene is not in the books. It is just a plot hole of the books that they decided to ask these two mystified actors to act out, which is the government offers to buy all of the reared and steel, thus making him a ton of money, a thing that a character who wants to make a ton of money would obviously say yes to. But he says no. Why? Mine, mine. Yes. <laughs> yes. Despite, <laughs> to spite the world. Right. Yeah. Yes, the good guy of the fucking movie refuses to sell his patent at any price to the government because fuck Earth. No, no, no. Hold on. He would have sold it. All he had to do was say the steel was pretty. If he said the steel was really pretty, (laughs) he would have sold it. He said he would do that. But the guy was just like, this is a lot of money, sir. (laughs) I'm just going to give you the money and not say the steel is pretty. How about that? It's billions. That's crazy. That's what Donald Trump thinks business is. Yeah. Is you come into the store and you're like, oh, I'd like this shirt. And they're like, tell me it's a great shirt. Nope. Now it's not. A, now I know it's not a great shirt. <laughs> if you bring a sale to a halt for a weird fucking Sam Shepard thumb in my mouth moment, there are bees in them. I didn't notice them. I, I got duped up until the moment that your personality escaped from between your lips. Thank you for helping me. God, the moral of this story is these are my toys and you can't play with them. Yep, yep, 100%. Wolf. And then and then we get, God damn it, these writers are so lazy. A series of headlines. We just scroll over magazine covers and headlines talking about how scared the public should be of Reardon Steel. Yeah, all, all the magazines are lying about his magical untested metal that they, they tested and they're quoting scientists who tested it. Yes. So like... What this basically OSHA can't regulate metal safety at work because you have metal in your house is the point they're trying to make here, which we actually did. Our Supreme Court made that point recently. Oh, so Jesus cool. <laughs> also, you can't look. Look, you, you, we have to lie to get these grants, guys. That's what this one scientist says. And it, yes. it's like it's it's. I just have to lie. That's basic science, man. That's yep. how science works. We lie about science. Yeah, Dagny, or is it Dagny or is it Hank who's confronting him here? It's Hank. I think yeah. it's, I think it's, yeah. yeah. Hank like corners him in his like science courtroom. Oh, which no, 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 it is Dagny. No, that's it's Dagny. It's Dagny because she goes, talks yeah. to the philosophy professor right that's after. She right. goes down to the Institute of Science. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. State <laughs> Science Institute. Dag- Dagny confronts him at the science courtroom. <laughs> the big science building. Yep. Right. Where he's a judge, he's a science judge, science and a judge, judge in, yep. in the science courtroom, and she's like, <laughs> "Why would you lie?" And he's like, "You have to see." He he literally tries to do follow the money for an idiot, right? He's like, "You got to follow the money." You see, this is funded by the government, and the government shit. I ran out of stuff. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, why wouldn't the government want nice things? <laughs> <laughs> it, the point is that they get so confused by themselves. The point is that we at the big science state science institute rely on public funding and the public doesn't like the metal beca- because we said, we it, said yeah, it's bad. So we have to say it's bad still more on to keep to get. Well, <laughs> who's John Galt? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> But he's he's so sorry, though, about compromising his principles that he will give her some hints as to the larger storyline. Right. See, it turns out that he used to be the teacher of all the (laughs) mysterious characters at the heart of this stupid fucking story. Right. He was the teacher of Ragnar the pirate. They had a pirate training program at this college. (laughs) Uh God damn it. I majored the wrong major. That sucks so bad. There was a three student classroom that consisted of Dankonia, the pirate, and another dot dot dot. dot. (laughs) Who is the other guy? But it's great because in the book (laughs) you can sort of glaze past that. But when you have to put it on screen, he's like, there was Dankonia, a pirate. Yeah. And then (laughs) I have to go to science court where I judge I'm things. I'm walking away now. You're, you're not going to tell me about Lou, the third Lou, one? Lou, 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 <laughs> end of sentence. Science. Shush. I didn't. Take away the cake. <laughs> 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 Whatever, I'm not going to be in the part two, so it's fine. <laughs> so so we get more awesome train track construction. And this time, Dagny is on site. This is, the I think, oh. the only exterior shot in the entire fucking movie. 
She's on on site with and the big oil big wig guy is there. Ellis Wyatt. Yeah. Yes. Everybody's in very smart business wear on a construction site with <laughs> yes. no hard hats or yes. anything. Yes. They're just walking around in her fucking six inch heels. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And he compliments her. He's like, I love the way you work with those men. And I really wanted her to be like, yep, keep hammer hammer on the, the road. <laughs> Spike. Nothing a fucking welder likes better than the CEO staring over their shoulder and <laughs> right. telling them to do it better. Hey, you're leaning into the area. Can you just back up? Can you back up? You're not helping so at all. So does the little hose thingy, does that shoot out the metal? <laughs> don't, it, don't, don't pull the lever. Don't pull, you're pulling the lever. I feel like that visor would make it harder for you to see. You should take it off. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Hank Reardon is also there. He wants to build a bridge for her. The, the two of these characters are supposed to be in love, right? But every conversation they have is so boring and the actors are not talented enough to pull off chemistry. So you just have to sort of infer that from the music. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you meet another couple because you're on vacation or something and they suck ass but you're stuck at like dinner with them because mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. on a boat or whatever. And you're like, how do these people meet? This is, this is that couple's meet. <laughs> you found it. He was obviously there and he was like, I could make you a bridge in three months. And she was like, sploosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So a bracelet. I'm going to go fuck it real quick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is playing fucking Hungry Shark. I'm trying to make conversation. <laughs> you know what? This is a me thing. I'm bringing me to this review. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, he says, um, you want to fuck me later? I'll build your bridge. She says, sure. Why not? And then we have this really long panning shot of all the shiny new railroads. Yes. Nice CG <laughs> shot. The great thing about the CG is that someone was like, oh, okay, so it's just a steel bridge and they CG'd in a steel bridge and they were like, no, it's magic. So make it well, shinier. make it shinier than regular metal. Would it be mm -hmm. shinier? Yes, it would be shinier. <laughs> so you'd want you'd want it to look like a comical, like sort of Enterprise Hall esque metal. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Make it an Enterprise Hall. Should it be like I want you to when you look at it, it's like ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have it, have it ding. <laughs> Just imagine you took Silver Surfer and you pounded him out really, really long <laughs> into a bridge. Yeah, that's what yeah. I want. Oh, Jesus. All right. Well, once again, we're in that any scene break is as good as any other kind of position. So we're going to call that random moment the end of Act 2 and take a break. But first, let me give Act 3, Act oh, 1.3, the hard sell. The end of Act 2 thirds. Yeah. <laughs> Can Mexican production meet the additional tonnage requirements for this project? <laughs> Our seaboard scrap God. price is still anchored to the value of iron ore. Will the upward trend in hot rolled steel from China continue to spike? Find out shit exactly as interesting as those questions, only without all the real world implications. <laughs> when we return for the belabored conclusion of Yikes. Atlas Shrugged Part One. Cecil. Jesus. Hey, buddy. What? Morning. What are you guys doing in my house? Uh, God, we're here for some of that delicious coffee. Yeah, I don't know what you do, man, but that coffee is so much better than the stuff we steal from Big Donuts. Oh, is it the coffee maker? I bet it's the coffee maker. It's the maker. Guys, I've been telling you, it's not the machine. It's Trade Coffee. What's Trade Coffee? Trade sells the freshest roasted and ethically sourced beans from America's best independent roasters. Mm. They ship it all free to you as often as you like, whole or ground. Ooh, that sounds uh, I want so fancy. that. I want it now. I want it right now. Whether you're a coffee nerd or just want a better daily cup, Trade's real coffee experts taste test over 400 roasts and use technology to match you to your ideal coffee based on your preferences and brewing method. No, what are you doing here? Oh, I, I'm here for your bagels. Trade actually sent us a couple of bags of coffee to try, and it was amazing. Yeah, they even asked me how I make my coffee and recommended a blend based on using my Chemex. And for our listeners, Right now, Trade Coffee is offering a total of $20 off your first three bags when you go to drinktrade.com slash awful. To get started, take their quiz at drinktrade.com slash awful and start your journey to the perfect cup. That's drinktrade.com slash awful for $20 off your first three bags. All right. You guys, now you, you know my secret. We we leave? I mean, while we're here, you could make a frittata. Sure, I'll make a frittata. Yeah, <laughs> I love those. Cecil makes the best frittata. I like when the ads have happy endings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I'm proud to say that in spite of the interference of the National Science Institute, 
Reardon Steel sees its very first use today. This fine metal is free of government oversight, unnecessary testing, and the interference of government busybodies. So let's drive in that first spike. Uh, Mr. Reardon, the, the steel appears to be on fire. Oh, uh, yep. That is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that kind of thing happens. It, it's nothing that a uh, little bit of, so, uh, uh, we'll, I'm sorry, sir. Figure, it seems yep. to be warping into a swastika. Well, yeah, yeah, it does that. Um, uh, no. it's actually an accident. I, I don't, I don't know. That seems super impossible, but it really is doing that. I don't know. Sorry. What, uh, what is that fluid leaking out? That is toxic waste. From China. I got a great deal on that, by the way. Just, it's an amazing uh, deal. The waste is on fire yep, now. Yep, now I the see that. Yes, it is. I see that, that it's on fire. I feel like the scientists might have caught this. Uh, who's to say? I mean, the scientists. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Dagny <laughs> showing up at Taggart HQ. Yikes. And, and learning that yet another employee quit and their stocks are just plummeting. <laughs> Eddie basically comes up to her and he's like, it's not just that Ben quit. It's also the plot of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so and now they've got to enact this dumbass plan, which I, I have to assume in the book made more fucking sense. But a hell, I don't know where she's like. All right, to save this business, I'll have to abandon it. I'll have to break away <laughs> with my own railroad company. And then once my railroad company is successful, remerge with yours. It's just like, what are we? Are you giving us a prospectus? <laughs> no, it it does not make more sense. That's what happens in the book, too. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, they're going to spin off their toxic assets to her new company. <laughs> and the point here is we need deregulation. So, you know. The Enron model can succeed more. Ooh. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, what's amazing about this is that this is supposed to be Dagny's big bootstraps moment. You know, I'll take the failing parts of the company and I'll make them work all by myself with, of course, qu quite a bit of money. Uh, and also, I need all your government contacts to make yeah. sure I get all exactly. my Exactly. Yeah, she and... totally does. Right, this. and all the assets <laughs> being handed to me on a silver fucking platter. Yeah, yes. free. Yeah, that and free. my bootstraps. <laughs> Yeah. And then and then he's like, what are you going to call your new line? And I wrote oh, in my notes, she'll call it the John Galt line. And then she said, we'll call it the John Galt line. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and her reason is she's like, I named my company Quitter Inc. because we're winners. Damn it. We are winners <laughs> over here. It makes no sense. They it ask her why. <laughs> and she gives opposite the op whatever the opposite of answers is, is what she gives. And I'm so happy they kept the final line exactly from the book, which is so fucking stupid. And they kept it in the movie and you get to watch this actress deliver it through gritted teeth at, I assume, gunpoint. <laughs> I have never done anything to hurt a living creature ever in my entire life. But if you don't train company well, I will destroy <laughs> you. If, if you double cross me. Yes. So, yeah, she has this quick. Oh, by the way, brother dearest, I will fucking end you i will end <laughs> you <laughs> kind of a moment so why <laughs> and it happens right after she's like okay two last things before i go and she lists her two conditions her two last things and then she remembers this thing and she's like one last third third thing it's this I'll isn't destroy a demand you. kind of made it less will, impactful shit. i'm gonna wheel this cake into the other room i'll two be back with <laughs> three more things <laughs> two b b p s i'm storming back in now and i have one more i mean what's the worst that's gonna happen if he ruins the railroad just by reading for 200 hours right exactly it's not a big deal <laughs> so so she heads to Danconia to see if he will help her get oh, yeah. her new company financed. There's this great, like, okay, what if I fucked you? And he's like, no, that wouldn't help. And she's like, oh, well, I'm glad you told me now. Holy kind of a moment. Shit, that's so awkward. <laughs> okay, but this scene, compared to the last scene, is fucking insane. She's like, God, I guess I'm the one who has to fix everything around here. Give me all the assets. I'll drag this company out of the mud. And the next scene, she's like, here's some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I'll like jerk you off or whatever. You want me to jerk you oh. off? <laughs> Dan County, I'll jerk you off. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then this is where she really doubles down on the name, right? He's like, well, why are you going to call it the John Galt line? And she says, I'm going to call it the John Galt line because I'm sick of hearing that name. And I'm like, well, you'll hear it what? more now. She's like, because it means quitting and I'm not going to quit. And I'm like, well, now it makes negative sense. What the no, fuck are you talking about? I'm sick of hearing it. But this actor turning down the sex is fucking amazing. <laughs> Isn't he? Right, because you, you get to see him be like, no, I get you're conventionally hot, but it's just, it feels like a lot of elbows, you know? <laughs> like if what, if the concept of an elbow could be had sex with, that's, <laughs> yikes, is what I'm saying. I can round myself off a little bit. I feel I like know. I can. I don't think you can. I don't just think you can. Sand it. Slightly <laughs> lower lighting. <laughs> So yeah, so so, but she then he he turns her down. So we get this like dejectedly closing the perspective montage where oh, more and God. more bankers <laughs> won't finance her company. Yep. <laughs> Apparently, she couldn't get a sit down meeting with both of them. She just like chased them down yeah, random know, business <laughs> hallways. Well, they're all walking away as she's giving them a bit. It seemed like one of the meetings was actually a walking meeting, though. Yeah. yeah. And he, she, she's got the like respect is for the loan she's trying to get. She's like, what is she showing him? At the, like, as you can see, the trains go left to right <laughs> on the, the paper. Oh, he's gone. Also he's gone right right to left. Also right to left. If you could, they can go She's shouting at the people way. as they're walking Not away. Not at the same time. Amazing. I can also make them. Ah, oh, he just, he said he left. Okay. There's a, if you flip through and you look at the bottom left of the page, there's actually the little train. I there. offer hand jobs at the end as a desperate. <laughs> no, okay. Would you like to look at our four hours of eye stock footage of trains? Maybe. <laughs> I'm not as much of an elbow as you think. Uh, okay. you, have to, you have to picture this photo moving. It's like chugga, 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 choo, choo. So, and so, but she does manage, I guess, I don't know why we get the dejectedly closing the perspective montage because at the end of it, she does get her company financed, right? Yeah. She comes into Reardon's office and she's like, well, that's it. My company is four fifths finance. We just need one more rich white guy. And he's like, I'm a rich white guy. <laughs> What's great is they don't know how stock percentages or they don't know how anything no, works. Uh -uh. So he just signs his name to a random blank line. And then the camera pans down fucking sarcastically to be like, yeah, man, he just signed his you name just on signed like your name. And some now graph you're... paper. <laughs> one loan. One Hank. name. This is... <laughs> now you're on the ballot in Mississippi. There yeah, you go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Five white people get you on the ballot. There you go. Yeah. So, oh, and then he's like, oh, you know, I have a folder I'd like to show you. And I'm like, oh, please be a dick pic. Please be a dick pic. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, it's pictures of those impossible perpetual motion engines that the diesel company that went all socialist tried to make before they went all socialist. Hey, Ayn, I know you need a second kind of magic in your movie. Just uh, whatever you do, don't try to describe how you think cold fusion would work, okay? <laughs> well, baby, let me tell you what happened, okay? There's a vacuum, yeah? and then there's like electricity, and that makes all the vacuum go away, and that make the gasoline from Jensen. <laughs> well, I also, I love, because this is where he learns that the legislature has passed this bill that you can only own one company. Yeah. So I feel like him having bought into one fifth of her company, like, I feel like you're, you could still stop that, but the movie never seems to recognize that that would be affected in any way. Oh, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any White House in my weird big stone disc. So. <laughs> Do you mind if I scratch that out with a fingernail? I have mice and a maze in here. That actually, it's great for giving examples. <laughs> yeah, but he decides that he'll keep. He's going to keep the metal company. Come hell or high water, he'll sell everything else. But they can't have Reardon steel, which. According to the logic of the movie, means that he should, at the end of this selling all his shit montage, just be like, "Great." Now, if only I had some shit to put in this steel making factory because I don't have our trucks to ship it off. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just got a bunch of machinery, don't I? Well, we have this stupid, again, them not knowing how anything works, right? Because, like, if they said you could only have one company, then you would just have one umbrella company that would have all your shit. So instead, they have him having to, like, he has to sell you know, Hank Reardon or mining company and Hank Reardon shipping company or whatever. So we see him like sadly giving over the, you own the deed. 
to his kind mm-hmm. of but he, he's he's handing like one business on a piece of paper to each, <laughs> to each of his friends. So again, the bill would accomplish nothing. You would just okay, you'd find like ten friends to technically be the owners, and you'd still be the owner. It, nothing is is being accomplished here, and they they seem to think this would all happen like that day. Yep. So like they signed a bill. <laughs> You could only, you only have one company. So the number of companies in America and the number of owners became equal today. Yeah. Starting now, like that day. Right. Yeah. No, if you, if by, if by end of business on Friday, you haven't gotten rid of your multiple companies, we just give it to a random Latin woman. So <laughs> get on it. You know, one montage. Yeah. Did you hear about that pirate? <laughs> so, yeah. And, and by the way, like, let's keep in mind that the stakes, the, the, like, the, the terrible turn this movie has taken is, that an obscenely rich person might be less obscenely rich later, or now now has a lot of money. Well, right. They don't they don't seem to. That, that, apparently, you you're not allowed to sell those extra companies. You just have to give them because right because it's all his buddies that were asking him for money earlier. Also, his family kind of voyeurly watches him sell all his big <laughs> yes. businesses from another room, like drinking tea and like sneering right? at yes. him the whole time while he's he's selling off all his assets. And they're like super, <laughs> his freeloading family is super happy about it for some reason. They're doing the wah wah gesture at him like, oh, <laughs> my companies that's you that's you <laughs> you suck at sex she tells us she tells us how much you suck and once again to reinforce eli's best worst right so we, we cut to dagny right she's in her office businessing away and a union rep shows up again obviously a bad guy right and he says hey you know you have a thousand miles of untested metal that every respectable scientist has said won't work you can't make people drive trains on that shit. I'm a bad guy right now. Right, and the movie's like, can you believe this fucking government interference where there's like, oh, you have to test it, da 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 Yeah, her response is, tell your men you don't want them to have jobs. And he's like, well, no. I want them to have safe jobs is what we're trying to do. They wouldn't. Right. And then she's like, well, they'll have a choice between dying and making a living. Thank you very much. Yeah, right. It'll be voluntary. <laughs> and it's like, are you going to pay them either way? No. Then no, the fuck it will. I'll ask for volunteers who I'll pay. That's a job. I just described a job. Right. The, the <laughs> Shit. Ayn Rand's thought that the problem in America was that its workers were too safe. Mm-hmm. Too, unions are too strong. 2011. This movie was made in 2011. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, we should do the scene where the unions are too strong and workers are too safe. Oh. Look, Dagny, here's how you do this, Dagny. Dagny, just just call them heroes. If you call there them you heroes, go. they'll That's get right. on the train. No problem. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You don't have to pay them extra. No, you don't. I do want to point out one other thing about this scene, which I love so fucking much. After she explains that she, she's going to ask for volunteers who she's going to pay, there's that awkward, like, he's supposed to storm out scene. But the pause is just a little too long. It is. <laughs> because it's these people long. don't know how to make money. So she's like, I'll pay them. <laughs> oh, I'm striving. I'm oh, angry. Yeah, I, I thought we were going to ask, morning. who is John Galt? Are, 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 are we done? Do you know when they're going to wheel that cake back in? <laughs> <laughs> the bald guy was crying hard, right? You saw it, like, hard? He wasn't crying. He's fishing in his pocket for a smoke bomb to throw on the ground yeah, right, right. so he can leave. <laughs> so, You're crying. <laughs> so, all right, so now we cut to a rich guy bar where, where James Taggart and one of the colluders is watching... The train news network talk about the maiden run of the John Galt line. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, it's not just them. It's everyone in the world with bated breath. Well, yeah, (laughs) that too. They keep, they keep cutting to all these different people, like staring at people walking to a train. Right. Yes. Watching in Times Square on the big screen. (laughs) By the way, this train is going to go because Ayn Rand knows nothing. 250 miles an hour. I the fact that we don't get an internal shot of someone's cheeks flapping as they're like, oh, <laughs> it look, there are trains. That's the that's the fucked up thing is that there are trains that go way the fuck faster than that. Yeah, <laughs> like there are Chinese trains that go three hundred miles an hour. Like, yes, you that. But I, I love that they're magic fucking metal and they're magic engines and shit. And all we can get is like. 85 percent of a Japanese bullet train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. They also try to make this. 
into an action moment. We see the train go. It starts going. And somebody's like, 100. <laughs> and then he's like, 125. We're like, wow, I guess that is all going to look the same, right? 100 mile an hour train or 200. <laughs> it's not going to really look any different to us as observers. <laughs> 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 Fast. <laughs> also, they go up to his bridge that he built. And there's a moment of tension, right? Where they're like, <gasps> and then they're like, we did it. I, I feel like they were both acting like they weren't sure they were going to survive traveling over right. that bridge. I feel like you would have put a train with no humans over yeah. it a few times first. I just, <laughs> or at least the low paid workers you asked as a volunteer. Well, to go yeah, over there you first. go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Call them a hero. That's what the scientists want. Yeah. <laughs> also, this is supposed to be like, like they're talking about moving freight the whole movie was this a passenger train yes it kind of looked like a passenger train i don't understand you you're talking about the whole movie like man we really got to move this oil through from colorado to the rest of those poor shitty states around colorado and then they're like oh but we we built a passenger we kind of fucking misunderstood the assignment that's on us i'm sorry i'm sorry can you just hold this oil in your lap maybe (laughs) while we drive it really fast (laughs) would it be uncomfortable for you also, I have to point this out. This, them riding the train and triumphant music playing around them, this goes on for literally three minutes. I yeah. know that doesn't sound like a long time, but like, like to watch people stand on a train going, huh? Huh? Three minutes naming numbers. <laughs> 150, 155 now. Okay. Yeah, right. There's a point where you could tell that the fucking actor is mad that they went with 25 mile an hour increments. He's like, I got to do this like seven times now. <laughs> the triumphant music gets lost. It's that's how long it is. It's like, bah, 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 bah. oh, still going. <laughs> bah, 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 this doesn't lead to a thing happening, right? Normally, if you, you know, if you spent two and a half minutes of everybody's on the train, oh boy, we sure hope that bridge holds and everything. There would, they, the bridge would be attacked by Godzilla or something, right? Like the bridge would, there would be, oh, there are enemies on the bridge trying to blow it up. Something would happen, but no, they just get there successfully <laughs> and it ends. The train. Yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> everything worked out for white people and Rand <laughs> so okay so we cut back to James and the Irish monk they're watching the train news network and they're like oh it turned out that all the experts were wrong and that Reardon Steel is the shit and we're like what's well, one train went over it yeah. once <laughs> how, do you, how do you guys think science works also, as they're walking, as they're filming, so they're filming this scene of them triumphantly walking off the train mm-hmm. and towards their car. And this is happening on the news broadcast. And then, like, the fat guy invites them to dinner, like, while they're walking. Yelly fat but it's guy. it's the news broadcast. Yeah. They, yeah. they yeah. mic'd them up before they walked out. They're like, <laughs> if you guys have any personal conversations, we're going to get you a, a live mic so you, we can get that. <laughs> it was crazy. But... This does lead to the terrible, like what terrible people think a good time is montage. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, where they're all yes. celebrating their train success. Right. But, but they're like, these actors could not muster fake laughs, <laughs> right? It's the classic scene intro. And I said, not on my Chinese food. <laughs> and the two actors are just like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so it's supposed to be <laughs> yarp, I yarp. so hard at this moment because they're supposed to be having this huge fucking party because they made a train go across a bridge but it's just it's three people <laughs> right that's yeah. it so it's madison cawthorn meeting his wife at a casino in <laughs> russia <laughs> so at one point the background music that's like the party background music of like dum, bum, 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 and it stops and then it's just like the three people would be in there it's like, just, all right. i guess i don't feel like i'm really needed <laughs> Yeah, you guys could They're just, just having like really hard eye contact, all eating their steaks, a, not yep. knowing what to say next. Do you have a really big baked potato by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want to? I'll tell you what, I'll just pass my phone around the table. You can just put in what you want from Grubhub. It doesn't seem like a, a catering situation. Oh, and then in addition to the three magical technologies, we also have the oil guy, right? Wyatt, whatever, says to him, 
he's like, hey, by the way, do you guys know anything about the Wyatt whatever reserve? And they're like, oh, yeah, that hollow area with no oil in it. And they're like, why would you guys even know that? That makes no sense. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yes. But it turns out that there is oil. It's the biggest oil reserve in the whole wide world. And we're like, well, that's <laughs> dumb. And he's like, yep, yeah, yep. that's kind of dumb. We already have magic steel and <laughs> yeah, magic no, more wine. Magic, so, yeah. magic steel and <laughs> yeah. secret oil and his coal fusion engines. So, so literally vibranium, cold fusion, and the biggest oil <laughs> in the world <laughs> in Colorado. Yes. And under that is the biggest natural gas. Oh, that's reservoir. right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because Ellis Wyatt, the hero, invented fracking. That's <laughs> yep. also oh, a yeah, thing that's right. happening here. And, and underneath that, the world's largest diamond. <laughs> <laughs> and underneath that, underneath that, an even bigger diamond. <laughs> the galaxy's largest diamond. Paul Ryan J-O-I. <laughs> swear to God, if there's a third diamond, I'm going to poop. <laughs> you guys poop during J-O-I, right? It's not just me. If they tell you to. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. It's instructions, it's instructions. dude. Right. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't skip an instruction. Sometimes I put myself out there and I'm worried I'm not going to get the yeah, report right. and I feel so <laughs> held. This is restorative community. They don't usually tell you to. Justice. <laughs> All right, so, but he tells him about the secret oil reserve. Then he gets the impression that they want to fuck. So he's like, oh, you know, I've got to go. Turns out there's some, like, great fucking beds upstairs. Bye. <laughs> Did it? Have a, this isn't a, th I just realized this isn't a threesome vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely felt, oh, yeah. Oh, God. All right. Well, I just, I don't, I don't even feel like I would, should bother making the pitch at this point. It's very clear. Well, I guess we should all head to bed. Yes, we should. Sure. Okay. Oh, so sure. are we all holding hands? No, it's just the two of you. Okay. All it's right, just the well, two of you holding hands. Apparently, okay. Okay. I will go fuck off. I'm going to go call China. Just coming back to check one more time. Nope, still not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> China. Yep. Can I watch? Nope. Okay. All right. <laughs> so yeah. So so they go off to fuck. He gets a knock on the door, and it turns out it's the mysterious guy that wants to talk to him about his Lord and Savior, John Galt. Right. Yeah, because really rich guys open their door by themselves at two a.m. Well, right, right, and you can just walk up to their houses and knock. You know, is uh, is how it yeah, works. Yeah, sure. Yeah, in twenty sixteen. <laughs> hey, man, I just saw you get turned down for that threesome. You want to come to a valley where you're the most important Stop person? Oh, selling. So you had me at you have a fedora. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next morning, we get Dagny and Hank waking up from their night of dry, boring sex or whatever to find out that Wyatt has fucked off to the secret valley. Right? Yeah. So he's like, and, and Hank is like, well, that's great because it wasn't a threesome anyway. And I think that we should spend basically the rest of the movie following leads to get us to the secret perpetual motion engine. And she's like, you're married. I'm just kidding. We suck. Imagine thinking that we cared about other people. That's funny. <laughs> mm. Come on, let's go. Yeah, let's, let's, we're in Colorado. Let's drive to Wisconsin. <laughs> yes. That's just right around the corner, right? At 3750 a gallon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an $84 billion trip, guys. Right. Take it yeah. serious. Exactly. So yeah, but, but so they go out to the, where the old diesel company used to be. And she's like, you know, it's a real mystery why this went out, company went out of business. And he's like, it's no mystery. It's because they were a socialist capitalist company. And she's like, oh, yeah, I know that. But why would I not know that? It would be so weird for me to say this if that was publicly. <laughs> according known. to him, he says they paid everyone according to their needs. And that was the problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will give the makers of this movie any amount of money to describe how that went wrong. Well, I have three kids. Fuck. <laughs> well, so she says, this is an actual goddamn quote from the movie. Dagny says at that point, why all these stupid altruistic urges? It's not being charitable or fair. That's her reaction to that. <laughs> What's up with all this yeah. stupid altruism? That's, I'm not like exaggerating. That's what the movie fucking says. It's the worst. Jesus. So anyway, so they're walking around the old factory. They find a goddamn secret passage. He pulls the one book out of the fucking shelf or whatever, yep. picks up the mystery phone. And what's behind the door is them looking around for like two minutes. And then she's like, 
you see her turn and then like slowly go like she uncovered something that has been sitting on the counter the entire time that they both right yeah past. exactly i found yeah. this sitting in the middle of this table yeah. that we can both yeah. see yeah. it's uh i found it because it's the only object in the room yeah <laughs> it, it's on a pedestal right in the middle it's like fucking indiana jones and it's really well framed by the camera too well, so yeah, that's right. why I, I, that gave it away <laughs> yeah there's Which actually means- like some kind of like flashy highlight. It's like a video game telling me I <laughs> should have walked right sparkles. over to this. It dings when you look at it. You know? It sparkles weird. I don't know. It's- Do you see press X to interact? I press yes. Yes. Okay. We're, we're <laughs> talking okay. to it now, I think. <laughs> Oh, we got to make Atlas Shrug the video game. No, we don't. <laughs> no. I didn't learn Unity for nothing. We're making Atlas Shrug the video no, game. No, we're not. Jesus. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and I love the idea here is that, okay, so this company came up with a bazillion dollar perpetual motion runs on atmospheric electricity bullshit engine that could revolutionize the world but the company was so socialist that they went out of business so they just left the plans and the engine prototypes and everything in a factory that wasn't sold to anyone yeah they were like all right here it is the source of infinite energy Steve needs a wheelchair ramp. You know what? Fuck it. I'm walking out of here <laughs> right. quit. and into the ocean. <laughs> I quit. Also, it's like super secret technology, but they walk in, they're like, yeah, I know exactly how this works. Of course. Let me tell you exactly right. how yeah, this works. Yeah, it's like, well, if you did that, then why did you need to find it? You don't. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she describes the sun, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Yeah. She's like, yeah. No, it's like a fusion of helium particles. <laughs> so it's, it's supposed to be. Uh, an electrostatic dynamo, I think is how they describe it in the book. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So, yeah. So science, 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 they say. And then they have to find the mystery of the guy who oh, made it's the it. best. Now, this is Cecil's best worst. Any competent writer can wrap everything that happens into in this scene, this series of scenes into like nine seconds. <laughs> right. As a matter of fact, any competent writer could have put everything that's happened to this movie so far into about 18 minutes. <laughs> any competent writer doesn't have the action of the movie be going to the Hall of Records oh for a my while. Fucking God. <laughs> going through stacks of archives is the action of the movie for a long time. And not in a like montage way. We go from one person to another. And then, of course, they have all these insane details of one another. You know, well, that turns out that that feller was and they all have the silly names. Right. So it turns out that feller's name was Jed Starnes. And that's the next person you have to talk to. (laughs) The only explanation for this scene is that at this point, whoever was taking dictation from Ayn Rand was fucking with her inability to write names. And he was just like, okay, great. And then who do they run into? <laughs> Minglern. Great. Excellent. And how does Scott Mingler know the next person? Well, that person is Table Lamb. <laughs> so yeah. And, and then also, by the way, again, Gas is thirty seven fifty a gallon, <laughs> and they keep showing us all the different cities they've gone. They've gone yeah. to New Orleans, and then they go to Wisconsin. They go to they go all over the fucking country. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like you could call Jed Star. <laughs> yeah, no come calls. Also, how uh, how's that train company and steel company managing to operate without these two genies? I know, right? I think they need to be at the helm. It seems as though Atlas has already shrugged or something. Yeah comes back all the steels on fire he doesn't know what to do yeah <laughs> turns out atlas didn't have anything on him the entire time he's just yeah. oh shit i'm just i'm just holding my arms up <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fitting so yeah and eventually hank reardon realizes that he's like oh huge plot yeah. hole here i should be at my company and she's like all right well not i have not reached that point myself yet so i'll keep going without you and so she goes to this diner where you know, the the next person in the line of this side quest lives or whatever owns or something. Yeah, Colonel Sanders. Just I want to clarify just how fucking stupid this movie gets. The owner of this diner is the ex professor of the student of the man who knew the guy who bought the company <laughs> yep. from an estate auction. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's that's the path we've traveled down to. And we have traveled every step of that <laughs> path. Yeah. 
He's the former greatest philosopher in America. That's what he's described in the book. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And he dresses like Colonel Sanders. I mean, yeah. 100%. He looks like Glenn Beck in his Colonel at Sanders outfit. You should see this guy clap with just one hand, though. He's fucking... I just, <laughs> you can hear it. Yeah. So, but, but Dagny carries on... I'm doing it into the mic. <laughs> so, Dagny carries on... And, and, oh, this is where she gets the call from Eddie, where he's like, Oh, hey, by the way, they just passed a law that trains can't go 250 miles an hour. And she's like, oh, they're just doing that to fuck with us. And uh, and, and I wanted him to be like, well, no, like, like animals are sometimes walking across them. And that's <laughs> super crazy <laughs> dangerous. I don't <laughs> splash. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger cow catchers. <laughs> so, yeah. So but the government is out to fuck with their amazing convoluted business plan and shit. And then the diner guy gives her his stupid monologue and, and then leaves, right? God, the diner guy is so fucking great. So look, they've already used up all their idiot mystery language on Danconia. So this guy is literally just like, hello, I'm a mystery. Hundred <laughs> percent. That's exactly what he does. Answer it's my so- riddle. <laughs> Oh, okay. so I already true. know who John Galt is before you ask. I know yeah. who he is. So <laughs> what has two legs what? Okay. in the morning? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Just can you tell me anything that has two legs? <laughs> he might as well try to Batman, but she like looks around the corner and he's there like panting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you weren't supposed to look oh, around the find, corner. Usually they'll just stand there and look twice. And, yeah. Goodbye. I'm out of the frame. You're out of the frame? <laughs> I'm looking at you. So she goes inside the diner to have some coffee. And of course, they've got Train News Network on, too. Yes. Who wouldn't? And the, the, the they're asking the, the government guy. They're like, hey, why have you passed this law that fucks with all these awesome business plans of, of Dagny? And he's like, oh, you know, it's kind of like a Robin Hood situation. And she's like, oh, and you're the bad guy in this movie? He's like, well, if you can believe that. Yeah, the Robin Hood character is the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robin Hood infantilized the poor people of Nottingham, technically. It's basically, it basically eugenics is what he did. What? I think the only thing we could all agree I would do that is dumber is if we had our own Robin Hood character who stole from the poor and gave to the rich. <laughs> well, the only way to make that dumber would be to name him Ragnar... <laughs> Scramp, Tom, Tram... But... But then the news comes up and, and they're like, oh, and also, you know, those secret awesome oil fields from before, they're exploding left and right. So she's like, oh, shit, I better drive to those oil fields. Why? <laughs> drive to Colorado. They're not hers. <laughs> what is she going to, she, is she going to fight the hell fires? But more, they're not hers, right? No. Are they hers? No. no. She's running to someone else's oil field. I don't think it yes. matters whose they are. It's that she thinks she's going to help. Right. What would you do? An oil fire. This is like me running to a fire at the local Domino's Pizza and being like, I was going to order from them. <laughs> 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 This movie at this point is literally like, oh, sympathize with the the lady who stood to make quite a pretty penny from these oil fields. Right. With God as my witness, I will now have 25% of my projected annum. So, (laughs) Jesus Christ. And then just to remind you how boring everything about this movie is, in this big sort of climactic finale moment, Mr. Mouch, yes, that's the fucking guy, the moochie guy's name is Mr. Mouch, the colluder guy, he steps out to announce that they're, they're they're issuing a moratorium on all new rail lines. <laughs> he, he's the, the king of economics of the United States right now. Right. He's declared communism. And I, I said it's so stupid. He also makes a rule that steel mills all have to make exactly the same amount of steel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> Dave, Dave, you're making too much steel, okay? And he's just cut it out. It's bad for the... Go go ahead. Finish your thought. 
And so Dagny, she, she shows up at the fires too. She runs into the guy's house. Apparently the guy built his house in the fucking middle of his oil fields. <laughs> this is like a terrible <laughs> place scenic, to put it. The scenic oil fields behind his right. house. Yeah. Instead of a <laughs> chocolate fountain, there's just oil coming out of his thing yeah. <laughs> courtyard. You guys want to dip a strawberry in that bad boy? <laughs> <laughs> And it's she, gross. But she die. runs into his fucking mansion. <laughs> <laughs> but she runs into his fucking mansion and she goes, Ellis? And I'm like, you don't think that all the firefighters and yeah, cops you ran by fireman. thought of run into the house and yell the guy's name? Yeah. I love that they were like, ma'am, ma'am, you can't run past us and yeah. help with the oil fire. And then they, <laughs> excuse me. Does, like, and they're excuse, just like, yeah. Excuse right, me. Okay, eh, forget good it. Good luck. For the best. Yeah. <laughs> look at her. Look at her face. <laughs> Oh, no, don't burn to death, please. <laughs> How's the train industry ever going to do? Well, and then, of course, we have to, like, get this VO flashback to Ellis, the guy, the oil guy that they oh, were partying yeah, yeah. with, the, that they didn't have the threesome with, meeting John Galt and being talked into going to the awesome capitalist government valley. Really doesn't take a lot. No, no. He's like, you want it? He's like, yeah, sure. I just I was going to yeah, do no, a three-way. Yeah. It didn't happen. I was so. done. Yeah, just let me light this on fire back here and I'll be with you in like five minutes. No problem. Do you guys get a lot of bears down there at the valley? I feel like you're going to get a lot of bears. In your home. Yeah, a lot of us get mauled by bears. That is, that is, that is yeah. a, they feed them a downside. But it's our choice. Yeah, but you can take him to court because we have a couple courthouses. So you can take him to court. <laughs> and then we see his stupid sign. I'm so glad they kept this from the book where he's like, I left these as they found as I found them on fire. Yeah. I, I'm <laughs> on strike. <laughs> Jesus, it's so stupid. Yeah. And then she sta stares out over all of the poorly CGI'd hellfires and she yells, no. <laughs> yeah. And I have no idea why. They're just like, we needed a dramatic thing with fire. <laughs> the end. <laughs> so the end. It's like, then, then it's like to be continued. Jesus. All right, well, I'd ask you the moral of the story, but we all know what that is and nobody fucking cares. <laughs> so instead, I'll just say, Cecil, thank you so much for suffering through this one with oh, us. Oh, absolutely. It's a, I would say it was fun. It wasn't no, fun, it's not. but at we least talking about you it was. So, if you yeah. said it anyway, you know, you can give me a bracelet and I'll pretend to like it, but I don't believe <laughs> Yeah. So, all right, well, that's going to do it for our review of Atlas Shrug Part 1, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to talk you into coming back next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Part 2, bitches! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> There's Great. no pirate. I'm fighting you. I, okay, there better be a pirate, pirate next week. All right. Will, be a pirate. All right. will there? Well, Spectacular. We'll, we'll find out. Dude. Eventually. <laughs> this is the walking part, but then maybe after that, pirate. <laughs> so with potentially Ragnar to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 337 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Cecil for hanging out with us today. Be sure to check the show notes for links to all his other stuff, and an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash god awful and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode you can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows the scaling alias citation data dnd minus and the skeptic Grad, available wherever podcasts live if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email god awful movies at gmail.com legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of p andrew torres tim robertson takes care of our social media our theme song was written and performed by ryan slotnik of evil drafts on mars all other music was written and performed by our audio engineer morgan clark and was used with permission thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week for heath and right neil the Omino Lucius promised to work hard during another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club Clubs. This movie about the beauty of unfettered capitalism made negative fifteen million. <laughs> Amazing. It sure the fuck did. Amazing. So and happy. was the most profitable of the trilogy. Yes, it was. Uh, James Taggart went on to blow his entire paycheck on Mexican ores. <laughs> <laughs> Hank's wife eventually did have an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> Not with him. Heath loved this book while he was old enough to vote. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not... Was, I voted, voted for Al Gore. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't think I feel like I don't know. I think we have to talk to Andrew. Yeah, also, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I'm going to laugh at whatever part. Yeah, I hear well, right, it, so like, right. Yeah, exactly. I, he, he, I, also, I, I also doubt Eli's abilities. Reject the premise. Parts are fine. Right. Universally, okay. I mean, at a funeral, it would just that would just be hilarious. That's so much extra funny. Yeah. Challenge accepted. in the middle of a UAG. Right. Mm-hmm. The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and the Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. You coming to bed, hon? Yep, honey. I'll be, I'll be right there. Just got to turn out the light. Ow! 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 Ah! Ah! Some things never change. Like your kids always leaving tiny toys on the floor for you to step on. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Sweetie, I think I left the downstairs light on. Please don't make me go. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Seven iconic housewives from four different cities. Look at this water. We're going to give them something to talk about. Vacation at Turks and Caicos. It's a party now. The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. All episodes streaming now. Only on Peacock.